Hey, what is going on guys and girls? In today's video, I'll be going over five things that you need to keep in mind if you like to create high quality, engaging SEO optimized articles or blog posts that actually rank on Google using ChatGPT. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you need to keep in mind is your prompts. So you need to use the right prompts to make sure that you're able to get the best quality output from ChatGPT. If you went over to ChatGPT and you just asked it to write you a 1000 word blog post, you would be able to get back that content, but it wouldn't be as engaging as it would be if you were um, able to focus on prompt engineering and using the right prompts to make sure that you're getting the best quality output. Because when you're using all of these large language models, the key thing to keep in mind is that the quality of input will directly relate to the quality of output that you get back from these AIs. For this example, I've asked ChatGPT to write me a 500 word article about why exercise is good for kids. And as you can see here, we were able to get some decent outputs. But if you want to improve the output, again, we need to improve the input. So the first thing that you need to focus on is making sure you're creating the best prompts for your outcome or for the article in which you're creating. For the second output, this is the prompt which I used. You are an expert blog post writer specializing in kids' health and exercise. Your first task is to write a 500 word article about why exercise is important for kids. Write in an informative and engaging way. Make sure to include personal anecdotes. Also include facts, data, tables, and a list. Write in markdown format. So just by buffing up our prompt, as you can see here, we get a nice um, article that's much more visually pleasing but if we actually go ahead and read through this we get um, some data from specific organizations that talk about health benefits for kids we get a nice breakdown of the benefits of exercise for kids such as physical health mental well-being social skills strategies to encourage um, exercising kids lead by example promote enjoyable activities and so on so as you can see here we get a much more well formatted article but also the article is much more specific to the type of um, topic in which we're writing about and we were able to get a much better article because because we were able to improve our prompt. So that's the first thing that you need to keep in mind. If you wanna get better outputs in terms of articles and blog posts, you need to make sure that you're focusing on optimizing your prompts for that specific blog post in which you're writing about. And just before we continue the video, I'd like to let you guys know of a new service that I'll be offering, and that is creating high quality SEO optimized blog posts for any niche. So if you like the strategies that I mentioned in today's video, and you would like me to create some blog posts for you, just head over to the link in the description below this video, select whichever package you like, fill out the form, and then I'll be in contact with you and we can finalize the order. So if you are interested in this type of service again i'll leave a link in the description below this video let's continue with today's video the second recommendation and the method that i recommend using if you like to create better quality blog posts using chat gpt is by actually not using the chat gpt web app i recommend using the playground mode Personally, I find that you're able to get much better outputs when using the playground mode. You have a lot more customization, a lot more setting options, which allows you to really direct the AI in the direction that you like and get the best possible output quality when creating long form articles and blog posts. So my recommendation is to apply for the API for GPT-4. You should have GPT-3.5 already available. If not, you need to apply for that as well. And then use the playground mode instead of using the ChatGPT web app. It does take some getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's much more powerful compared to the ChatGPT web app. So that brings me to my third recommendation or things that which you need to keep in mind to create better quality blog posts or articles, and that is to use the settings located in the playground mode. As you can see here on the right hand side, you have the temperature, which you can change. You have the top P, the maximum length, the frequency penalty, and the presence penalty. For most of these settings, you can keep it as is, but I recommend changing the temperature so you can go all the way up to one. Um, because the higher the number, the more creative your outputs will be. So essentially, you'll get more engaging and more creative outputs by increasing the temperature. Max length, this just really depends on the type of content which you're creating. If you're writing an intro or an outline, then you want to reduce this. But if you're writing a full length article, you want to keep this all the way maxed out. Next up is your frequency penalty and your presence penalty. Now, I recommend increasing this a little bit, not too much, because um, this allows the AI to not be repetitive in terms of its words or sound too robotic. But if you increase this too much, then the AI starts talking um, or starts writing in a very weird way. So you can increase this any, anywhere between 0 to 0 0.4. Um, I wouldn't really increase this too much. Next up, you have your presence penalty. Now, your presence penalty, um, increases the likeliness of the AI writing on new topics. So if you like it to talk about new topics, then you would increase its presence penalty. Again, 
I would be very careful in increasing this. You can increase this a little bit, maybe up to 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. But again, um, if you increase this too much, then the AI will talk about different topics that may not be related to the content which you're writing about. So for frequency penalty and presence penalty, you can kind of play around with this. But if you're just starting off, I would recommend leaving it, um, the presence penalty, at least leaving that to zero and maybe increasing the frequency penalty just a little bit. So another reason why I like using the playground mode is that you have the ability to change between models very quickly. As you already know, if you're using ChatGPT on the web app, if you want to go from one mode to the other, or one model to the other, let's say GPT 3.5 to GPT 4, then you have to open up a new chat. You can't really simultaneously change in between models, but you have that ability when you're using the playground mode. And when you actually start creating content, you'll see how important that can be. So that's my third recommendation of things in which you need to keep in mind if you would like to increase your output quality when writing articles or blog posts. And that is the settings. In the playground mode, as I mentioned earlier, you have a lot more customization and a lot more settings uh, compared to just using the web app on ChatGPT. You have the ability to change the temperature, the max length, frequency penalty, present penalty, and the ability to change between GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. So for those reasons, um, you're able to really uh, curate the best quality content for any topic in which you're creating. Fourth way in which you can increase your output quality when writing long form articles in the playground mode on ChatGPT is by making sure you're following the right process. As I mentioned earlier, if you just ask ChatGPT to write you a 1000 word blog post, it will be able to do so. But first of all, you may not hit that word count and also the quality of the content may not be the best. So I recommend following my process to ensure that you're able to get a much more in-depth and higher quality article. Let's start by copying and pasting over the prompt that we used earlier within this video and we'll paste that within the system. So the system is going to tell the uh, chat box what type of objective we're trying to get. So in this example, we're going to tell it that it's an expert blog post writer. It specializes in kids health and exercise. And then we also have our first task here. So you can actually go ahead and add the first task within the user or you can leave it within the system. So it may make more sense to actually copy over this prompt and paste it in, into the user section. And then we can submit this and the AI will start writing just as it would on the web app. But instead of just asking it to write a full article, what I found works a lot better is to ask it to write an outline first and then use that outline to generate the full article. So a prompt for an outline could look like this. Your first task is to write an in-depth and comprehensive blog post outline about why exercise is important for kids, write in an informative and engaging way, and also make sure to write in markdown format. So by using this method, we'll be able to get a full um, outline and then the AI can follow that outline to get you a more complete, more in-depth blog post. For this example, we'll be using GPT-4 because I just find um, that works a lot better. So let's go ahead and submit this and we should be able to get a title and we'll also get um, a outline in which we can follow. Here's a completed outline which we got back from ChatGPT using the GPT-4 model. We got an intro, we got physical benefits for exercise, mental and emotional benefits, um, age appropriate exercises, pretty cool how to promote an active lifestyle and challenges in encouraging exercise for kids and a conclusion. And as you can see here, it did continue um, starting to write the article which we really didn't want it to do so. So let's actually go ahead and stop it there. And what we can do now, we can just go ahead and remove this content. So I've removed the content. Now let's go ahead and add a new prompt for it to complete the full article. The prompt we're using is using this blog post outline above, write an in-depth, unique and engaging article about why exercise is important for kids, write for an audience of parents and be as informative as possible, include data, resources and tables in the article and always write in Markdown. So this prompt should be good enough for us to be able to get a high quality article um, using the outline in which we just generated. Now, once you're going to submit this, just make sure to increase your maximum length all the way because this is where we'll be generating the full article. So you wanna make sure that um, you're using as many tokens as you can. So again, once um, you're happy with your prompt, just go ahead and click submit and the article will start writing. Okay, so we can see here that it started to write the intro and it talks about being a parent and that's because we told it to write in the audience or we told it to write uh, to target the audience of parents. So again, we can see the article being a lot more customizable and more targeted for a specific audience, which will overall uh, write a better article for that audience. So as you can see here, um, these prompts, these settings uh, and using this, this method really does work. This is the full article that's been generated by ChatGPT and we can see that it's been generated in markdown format so we will need to convert this to make it much more readable but just by taking a look at it, it looks pretty good. We get a nice um, table here 
And then if we scroll down, we'll also be able to see some resources. So it's actually went ahead and cited its sources and added in references, which increases the authority of the overall article. So let's go ahead and copy this over. So as I mentioned earlier, it's in the markdown format. So we'll just head over to markdown to HTML, paste this in here, and you'll be able to see what that article will look like on a website. So we see the intro, we have physical benefits of exercise for kids. We get a three or four different points there, mental and emotional benefits for exercise. And again, you get a couple of points there. We get age appropriate exercise for kids and we get a nice chart or a nice table here. Um, which makes it much more engaging. Promote an active lifestyle for children. And again, you get some um, tips in there in which you can use, challenges. And then at the end here, again, we get some resources. So overall, I think this is a really, really good article. I mean, if we compare this to what we first were able to generate, um, I think that this is much better. And again, if we went ahead and expanded this, we would be able to get a much longer article as well. So this was the first article in which we got back from um, GPT 3.5. We did tell it to write 500 words. So maybe that's why it was a little bit shorter, but this is about 460 words. Again, um, it just looks like kind of just information put together, um, very kind of on the surface. This was the second um, output in which we got back when we did a little bit more prompt engineering. Um, this looks a lot better. Um, but again, I think it was about 500 words and that's because in the prompt, we did tell it to write 500 words. So of course, um, it would be a little bit um, shorter, but this is actually about 600 words, which is a pretty good article um, for sure. But again, we don't see the formats. We don't see the tables. We don't see the resources that we were able to include within um, our, our article when we used it in the playground mode. So that actually ties into my fifth tip or recommendation that you need to follow if you would like to create higher quality articles that rank on Google using ChatGPT. And that is you need to format your content in a way that's much more readable, but also much more informative for your readers. Let's say someone was on uh, Google and they're searching up information for this blog post topic. If you were to have a blog post um, like the first or the second output in which we got, while these are fairly good outputs, um, they're not as engaging, right? They don't have as much more in-depth in um, information as we were able to get within this last article. So by formatting your content better, including tables, including um, bullets, order lists, and so on, you are not only making your content more readable, you're also improving your on-page optimization, which increases the likeliness of ranking that keyword and that blog post on the first page of Google. So those are some of my favorite tips that you can follow to help you create higher quality content that actually ranks on Google. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned in today's video, let me know in the comments below. I would love to um, go ahead and answer any of those questions that you may have. As always, if you found some value from this video or if you learned something new, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.